Plastic is everywhere. In the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the products we use. We've sent it to space, ridden it to the corners of the earth, and littered the ocean with it. Yay! Before plastic, milk came in glass bottles, groceries were carried in paper bags, and appliances were formidable hunks of metal. Without plastic, many of our modern appliances would simply disappear. Say goodbye to your phone, your computer, your video games. On the bright side, though, millions of tons of pollution would also disappear. But how did plastic get to be this popular? After all, plastic is a relatively modern invention. How is a material so young bolstered so much of our modern life while contributing so much to its harm? Well, let's take a look at the influential invention of plastic. <laughs> To understand plastics, we first have to talk about polymers. Polymers, put simply, are long repeating chains of molecules. They're quite common in the world, making up the chemical structure of products like Teflon and silicon to natural materials like wood and even DNA. To get these molecules, we first need to harvest natural materials like oil, natural gas, and coal and break them down into small enough components. Once these natural materials are refined into small molecules called monomers, the polymerization process begins, linking these monomers together. The resulting materials are then used used often by melting and mixing to make different plastics. These different plastics are used in a vast array of products, consumer goods like DVDs, grocery bags and plastic bottles, medical equipment like glasses, joint replacements and lab tech, and heavy duty industrial products like bulletproof windows and body armor, as well as plumbing and car parts. The uses of plastic are really everywhere. Although this process seems complex and plastic manufacturing certainly isn't a walk in the park, the end result is a material like no other. Its strength relative to its weight makes it invaluable in industrial sectors. Its ability to preserve perishable goods creates endless uses in the culinary sector, and its unique properties make it irreplaceable in electronics. But how did plastic become such an integral part of modern infrastructure? The year elephants were saved was 1862. At least that's what plastic advertisements at the time claimed. That was the year Alexander Parks introduced the first ever plastic to the London International Exhibition. Although there have been historical references to plastic's predecessors, like natural rubber used for balls in Mesoamerican games and treated cow horns for windows in the Middle Ages, Parks' invention is widely seen as the beginning of modern plastics. Parkasine, as Parks humbly dubbed the material, was a happy accident, resulting from his attempt to discover an artificial substitute for a waterproof shellac. To be fair, plastic did go a long way to curb the killing of elephants for their ivory. In the waning 1800s, humankind was in the throes of the Industrial Revolution, requiring a growing amount of materials to meet skyrocketing consumer demands. Billiards, a popular game at the time, is a perfect example of human wants colliding with nature's limits. The leisure sport's growing popularity was a major influence on the rising demand for ivory. When plastics came to be products that needed ivory before, like billiard balls, they used the synthetic alternative instead. The use of whalebone, tortoise shell, wood, and stone were all reduced thanks to plastic. The invention was simply revolutionary. Humans no longer had to rely on the limited supply of natural materials to manufacture goods. They could just whip up some plastic. We had freed ourselves from the shackles of nature's limitations. I guess this far as we cared back then, there was an unlimited supply of fossil fuels that we could make plastic from. Simpler times. The environmental can of worms was simply kicked far, far down the road for future generations to worry about, and humans simply jumped aboard the plastic train en masse. In 1869, John Wesley Hart improved upon Parker scene using celluloid. This plastic was marketed like mad and became a booming success. The plastic train was absolutely chugging along. Leo Bakeland introduced the world's first fully synthetic plastic in 1907, Bakelite, Pumble. Men, apparently, these plastic guys. While parkasine and celluloid plastic still contained organic polymer chains extracted from natural materials, Bakelite was composed completely of human-made polymers. Bakelite met the electrical needs of the US, proving to be quite the capable insulator. It was durable, heat-resistant, and capable of being mechanically manufactured on a mass scale. In fact, this new material was so versatile, it was marketed as the material of a thousand uses. Plastic's effectiveness in manufacturing and commercial uses led to an ever-increasing demand. Companies 
companies dedicated more and more resources to developing new blends. The rate of plastification was one of create first and find uses later. However, the real golden age was yet to come. The manufacturing demand of World War II saw a plastic boom. Nylon, a synthetic substitute for silk, helped to make ropes, parachutes, body armor, and helmet linings. Plexiglass replaced normal glass in aircraft and military vehicle windows. U.S. plastic production increased 300% during the war. And when the war ended, plastics only grew even bigger. U.S. consumers bought more and more goods made from synthetics. In cars, it replaced metal parts. In homes, it replaced glass windows. In grocery stores, it replaced paper bags and glass bottles. Plastic came to represent an almost utopian view of the future, where humans could use this safe, sanitary, and cheap material to enjoy boundless material wealth. As the 20th century drew to a close, though, the public became more aware of the environmental problems. The horrors of the effects of chemical pollution and oil spills on the environment turned public perception against the material that these resources help make. Single-use plastics and the culture of disposable goods caused a plastic waste problem. Plastic was no longer the safe, sustainable material of the future. It was a cheap representation of modern industry's impact on the earth. The plastics industry itself came up with a possible solution, a recycling. A concerted effort saw many municipalities include recycling efforts in their waste disposal programs. I've got more on that in a bit. There's a good chance that you're interacting with a plastic product at any given time of the day. Even now, I absolutely am. This camera's mostly made of plastic. The tripod is on plastic. The TV over there so I can watch myself. I mean, it's plastic. Everything's plastic. But this abundance of plastic products has contributed significantly to pollution problems. Plastic's environmental damage is perhaps its most commonly known impact. Efforts have been taken to combat this growing problem. Biodegradable plastics and alternative materials have gained popularity in recent decades, and recycling programs have become commonplace in waste collection services, though with results falling short of the rate of pollution. Despite recycling efforts and their benefits, plastic waste still finds its way into nature and landfills. Many environmentalists claim plastic waste is one of humanity's biggest environmental threats, often citing the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a Texas-sized dump of plastic garbage floating around in the Pacific Ocean. Despite a widespread view of plastic as cheap and knowledge of the dangers of plastic waste, plastics are still widely used. In fact, there's an estimated 8.3 billion tons of plastic in existence to date. Even more astonishing, 6.3 billion tons of that existing plastic is trash. Plastic production has increased 200-fold since its PR heyday in the 50s. Even with its worsening image and environmental impact over the decades, plastic manufacturing has steadily grown. Advocates laud plastic for its versatility and ease of use in a wide range of manufacturing sectors, and there is no doubt it has been essential for the development of modern industry. But plastic is certainly not without its drawbacks. There's no doubt our modern world needs plastic, but it is becoming increasingly evident that our Earth needs saving from its negative impact. Thankfully, countless experts have answered the call. Since the biggest problem with plastic is that it does not decompose, companies have created bioplastics from organic and biodegradable materials such as seaweed, food waste, vegetable fats, and oils and wood chips. These bioproducts perform the same tasks as plastic while offering consumers the chance to throw them away guilt-free. Alternatives to single-use plastics are gaining popularity. Restaurants and grocery stores are offering paper and metal straws and bags. The reusable movement has even gained popularity enough that China in due to the nationwide ban of single-use plastic bags and straws. But this still leaves the millions of tons of plastic waste littering our world. This too is an issue being tackled, though. Organizations like the Ocean Cleanup are developing technologies to remove waste from rivers and oceans. They're even tackling the mammoth task of cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Creative ways of using plastic waste are bolstering recycling efforts. Plastic roads, a practice started in India, is gaining popularity. India's installed over 60,000 miles of plastic roads, while the technology is starting to be incorporated into more roads in Asia, Africa, Europe, and the United States. We're even finding ways now to make plastic decomposable. A team of scientists from Pakistan have even discovered a type of mushroom capable of degrading and dissolving plastics. All of these solutions, they are making a dent in the plastic problem that we face today, but they still have their work cut out for them. Decades of plastic manufacturing has made our modern world dependent on the material and built up mountains of waste to be cleaned. Thanks to modern recycling efforts and research into alternative materials, we're starting to control our plastic habit. Plastic may be everywhere, but that doesn't mean that it has to stay like that.
If you enjoyed today's video about one of the world's most influential inventions, well, we've got a whole series on influential inventions. I'm going to link to another one on the screen right now. Please check it out. And thanks for watching.